Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. Welcome one and all to a new episode of the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. I am your host, Nile, And I am your other host, Nolan. And today we're going to be doing a review of Uncut Gems, Adam Sandler's uh, latest movie. The first movie I can think of that wasn't a comedy role for him um and it's you know it's perfect timing uh because it's came out on christmas eve you know and so we have this nice movie about uh the underworld of uh gem dealing in new york and all the characters are jewish so it's a perfect christmas movie <laughs> you're right there's um, even a passover scene <clears throat> excuse me there's even a passover scene uh, real quick before we get into that, though, I just want to let everyone know we'll be doing a spoiler-free review and then giving you a spoiler warning and going more in-depth into it after that. Um, and also on top of that, both of us are kind of sick, so please excuse all the, the coughing and, you know, gross noises that come along with being sick. We'll try not to cough all over the mics. So anyway, without further ado uh so this movie kind of surprised me um like not that i was surprised like going into the movie but like i was surprised when i saw it existed you know i remember walking through the movie theater and seeing a poster that said adam sandler and in text all uh, only a little bit bigger than his name said uncut gems and i looked at that poster and went that doesn't look funny yeah uh, you could tell right off from the po- from the poster it wasn't going to be a comedy. Right. And so um, when the trailer started coming out, it was like, whoa, this is a departure for Adam Sandler. But man, he pulls it off. Yeah, I think I think this came along just so he can show off his acting chops. Is he a producer on it or anything? Uh you... I don't know. Could be. Anyway. I'll see if I can find that information, but but uh, yeah, he does a great job in it. Um, we'll say it's not an um, an uplifting movie. No, it is not. Um, in fact, it's one of those movies. I I know I often get frustrated with movies where the main character or major character is sort of self destructive. Um, because you just kind of go like, stop. Like you, you could just solve all your problems if you would just stop this behavior. Right, but when someone has an addiction to something, it doesn't. In this case, gambling. Yeah, it, like that's not something they can just do, you know. Yeah, so it's it's one of those movies. If if you are like me and you have a problem with that, <laughs> maybe you don't want to see it. I don't know, but yeah, it's just. It revolves around um, Adam Sandler, who owns a shop in the Diamond District in New York, selling jewelry, and just all the the debt he has that he floats around between different places and trying to make up for it by placing sports bets, and he eventually uh, owes money to the wrong people. Yeah, um, so real quick, it doesn't look like Adam Sandler had anything to do with any production or writing or directing or anything he was just the star that's like <clears throat> so that's interesting i mean because usually when when an actor has to take a departure like from comedy into something serious they're involved in the production or something because it's the only way they can be allowed to do it well so I, unless he's friends with the director or producer i mean or that, that could be that but could be it too considering um the nature of the movie and who all the characters are in the movie it's like they wanted to get every single person in the movie who is Jewish to be played by a Jewish actor. And because, I mean, it has like a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah, not going to say I mean, all. I'm not going to say all because it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have like Seth Rob Rogen. Perlman. Yeah, it doesn't have Ron Perlman or Seth Rogen. But it has a lot of of the like the big, or a lot of like Jewish stars from Hollywood. Yeah, people movie. you recognize and you've seen in other movies 
Uh, uh, but, so, but this, um, is a, this is a really well made movie, well written. It's very tense. The whole movie just makes you clench the whole time. Yeah, the whole time you're because you're like some, some parts more than others, but it it's uncomfortable, but not. I don't mean that in like a bad way necessarily, because that seems to be kind of what they're going for. Is they want you to be like uneasy with what's going on, you know? Right, because well, at any moment, the people he owes money to are about to catch up to him. You know, yeah. and. It's like, does is he gonna have the money this time? Uh, oh, he has the money. What's he, oh? Well, he doesn't have the money anymore, or whatever. You know, it's this whole sort of roller coaster. But it, <coughs> excuse me. The same time, it's not a fast paced movie. No. <clears throat> um, it's kind of slow, not boring, but it's just a slower paced movie. Yeah. Um, this uh, one actress, Julia Fox, she's done like one other thing or something. Yeah. I, I was like, what has she been in? Um, but. Uh, well, she's been in three things. One thing is not out yet. Yeah. She's been in the Great American Mud Wrestle short. And that was the first thing. And then PVT Chat, it's in post production, plays someone named Scarlett. So she hasn't done much, but um, she's pretty good. Yeah, for someone who's doesn't have a lot of experience. That was uh, his wife. No, that was his. Oh, his that was mistress. The, the mistress. Yeah, that's right. Uh, um, Idina Menzel. Right, is his wife. Yeah, I don't think there was anyone in this movie that wasn't really good yeah and um yeah i mean everyone in this movie did a really uh incredible job and there's even i mean there's some like rap stars in there too who i don't think are generally speaking actors um that even did a good job so uh yeah i mean if if it looks like something that interests you i recommend it um, there's nothing that um, nothing that makes it a must see in theaters. So there's no, no big action scenes or set big set pieces or special effects or anything. So if there is there are some people who are credited as stunt drivers, which I thought was weird. Yeah, there's no driving. I the only thing I could think of. Is there's one scene, and I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, but, you yeah. You know, okay. you know, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and you never see the driver. Yeah, so that might be the that might be what the the stunt driving is, but it's it's yeah. definitely not an action scene. So yeah, so yeah, if uh, if it interests you, go see it or wait till home video. Yeah, like, just, so there's nothing that makes that you're gonna regret not seeing it on theaters uh you know as far as oh i wish i'd seen this huge action scene and a big screen there's none of that in there yeah i don't think i've ever had that problem because we see so many movies anything we're even remotely interested in we see in theaters so yeah all right well let's uh throw up a spoiler warning yep there's not a whole lot to spoil but uh yeah not a whole lot i so i think this movie ended the only way it could have with him dying yeah but not just not just him dying he was murdered him being killed yeah. it's like the only way that this could have ended so basically he owes his brother-in-law some money i don't think they ever say how much it is <clears throat> it's but every time he gets the money he goes and bets it on something because he wants to build it up and his brother-in-law has these thugs coming after him uh and i'm not really sure if did he hire these thugs or maybe he owes them money i don't it's it's never really clear never really clear but they are definitely more determined to get the money than his brother-in-law is yeah um i guess maybe they're promised a cut maybe that's what it is um but they're especially the the main ones some pretty nasty dudes 
So th this guy, Keith this Williams, Keith Richards. Williams Richards. I've seen him in stuff. He's not. I, th I swear I've seen him in is, stuff. He has one credit. Hmm. The uncut gems. Maybe he just looks like somebody. Maybe that's just it. He just looks like somebody. He was really good, though. Yeah. But anyway, they're they're coming after him all and they're he gets violent with adam sandler a lot and i my thought was why are you working in the diamond district and you don't carry a gun yeah um but or anyway. at least have one in the shop there yeah something anyway um at the end of the money he aired in the money in the movie he has the money to pay back what he owes to his brother-in-law but then he's like wait i know and he decides to place a bet, and he, well, he plays part, a couple. Part of it was like he was trying to soothe uh, the the basketball player, right? So a, a MacGuffin, sort of, in this movie, he buys this opal from Ethiopia, and um, he lends it, and it's worth. He he's gonna auction it, and he buys it for like a hundred thousand dollars or something. Perhaps that's where the money went that he owes his brother-in-law i don't know um and he's gonna auction it and he thinks it's worth like a million dollars um and then he lends it to this basketball player he's a big fan of and the basketball player thinks he's got it, it makes him better like it's got some like spiritual power to it or something but when he gets it back to some put it connection up in, back to africa yeah when he when he puts it into the auction though um their appraiser doesn't know anything about colored uh, opals. opals. And so he way under appraises it. And well, we, we also don't know if maybe he, the guy who told him the, the price for the opals was... Well, the printer just has a mind of its own. I wonder if it's... I hope it's not picked up on the mics. Uh, I don't know. It, anyway. it does, I've heard it do that in the middle of the night sometimes. Oh, uh, but you, um, we also don't really know yeah, if we, maybe his appraiser was... Anyway, Adam Sandler doesn't agree with the appraisal at all. but So he doesn't get what it nearly what he thinks it's worth. Um, the basketball player wants it, but he manages to sell it because he gets his father-in-law to try to upbid it um, so he can get at least enough money to pay back what he owes to but, his brother-in-law. Whoops. His... But whoops, his father-in-law places the highest bid. <laughs> So now he's got to give that money back. Plus, now he owes his father-in-law some money because the auction house took a cut. But he managed to sell it to the basketball player for enough money. And then right when and he, and he calls his brother-in-law, I got the money, just come to my office. And then at the last minute, um, because the, the basketball player is kind of upset when he thinks, like, well, how much are you making on this? You know, I could have bought it for whatever you paid for it and yeah and anyway he runs this this whole thing like well no your thing like let me do my thing that's how i make money you you've been playing basketball and anyway he says i i think you're and he, he distracts him by talking about like you're such a great player i'm gonna put all this money you just paid me on on you uh tonight yeah. And so he places this bet. And there's a it's, it's like, actually a series of bets. <clears throat> it's a uh, like a bet because the the player plays for the Phillies. Yeah. Oh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Um, not the Phillies. Not the Phillies. Baseball, it's baseball. It's a baseball uh, team. Phil Phillies or Philadelphia. Um, and they they're playing against the Celtics, I think, aren't they? Or yeah, they're at the end. And um, anyway, so he he places yeah like. Uh, it's 165,000. 165, so he places one bet for them to for uh, them to win, and then I think two prop bets like that he would get the tip off the uh and then rebounds and then a number yeah a certain number of rebounds during anyway, the game. Anyway, if he wins all of these bets, not a basketball fan. Yeah, when he wins all these bet, if he wins all these bets, he's gonna have a million dollars. So he sends his girlfriend. Uh, to go place the bets he, at this he, some Indian he charters, casino. He charters a, a helicopter. Helicopter. Well, he couldn't. He, I mean, he could have just if it's a helicopter, he could have just flown her down to Atlantic City or something, right? Yeah, but where it was at, it looked like it was probably an Indian casino. Yeah, 
Yeah, that could be. Just where it was located. Uh, anyway, he sends her to a casino, place the bet. In the meantime, the bad guys show up. And he's got this, because of the value of you know his stuff, he's got these like two doors you have to be buzzed in. And it works like a an airlock. Only one can be open at a time. So you have to go through, be buzzed into one, close the door, then be buzzed into the next one, close the door. And so he's got them trapped in there, though, um, and makes them stay in there until watching the game. He's like, well, I'm going to, you know, and they're, they're pissed. Like, we want the money. He's like, no, 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 no. If I win this, then you'll get a lot more than, than I owe you. And he does. He wins. And so he lets them out. And he's like, ah. And then the, the main thug just shoots him in the face. And and just takes everything from his his jewelry store. Also shoots his brother in law. Yeah, shoots the brother in law. I think he was just fed up with this whole uh, chasing him around to get money. And then, so in the end, the the girls left there with a million dollars. Um, and the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we we don't see her even find out about. Adam Sandler's murder or anything. It was just the movie ends at that point. <clears throat> um, so this, I just want to point out this movie had John Amos in it. Yeah. Yeah. As his neighbor. Yep. John Amos. <laughs> yep. It was kind of at one point his son needed to use the bathroom. We didn't because he he has a house and a wife and three kids. But he, they're going to get a divorce, because, and so he's living in an apartment in the city with his mistress. His kids don't know that they're, that they're actually going to split up, and so at one point, is, he, they're out. He needs to stop by the apartment, and his kid's got to use the toilet, and he doesn't want his son in there seeing you know, any evidence that he has a mistress. So he's... Like said, make some excuse. Oh, the the bathroom's messed up there, and you can use the neighbors. And he knocks on the neighbor's door, and he's knocking yeah. on the neighbor's door, trying to get the them to let him use, let his kid use the bathroom. And he's like, oh, and the guy, the kid's like, oh, I don't want to use some stranger's bathroom. I want it. You know, why can't I just use yours? And he's like, oh no, like you know, this this guy, he's a great guy. He was he was in Coming to America. Uh, he's, he's an actor. He's in Coming to America, and all this, and you and you're like. You say the thing, you're like, oh, okay. And then it opens as John Amos. You're like, he was in Coming to America. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know, he's like, oh, this guy's a legend and stuff. It's it's kind of amusing. Yeah, it's just kind of funny him playing himself. Although he's credited as, like, Neighbor 33F or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Uh, I think we just basically ran through the whole plot of the movie with... Uh, yeah our description there there's not uh not a whole lot more like i said perfect christmas movie yeah especially you want to see this uh new up-and-comer julia fox and some sexy lingerie that was cool yeah uh let's see so our next review i think is going to be 1917 so you see now it's got a january 10 release date on IMDb, it had a December 27th or whatever release date mm. for months. Um, and I guess that's just a, like a, you know, in select theaters release. And it's getting its uh, general release in January. But it's still probably going to be the next movie we see, which is going to be in a couple weeks. Um, and then we just start getting into this this weird time uh of the year where there's not a whole lot of great stuff there's some decent stuff but it's all stuff that you know clearly the studio wasn't comfortable in having it compete against you know um the anything disney yeah and, well yeah <laughs> and anything in the the holiday movie season so we're getting like do little bad boys for life stuff like that um the gentleman the gentleman looks really good it's Metascore on IMDb isn't great, but I think that might just be people who just don't appreciate Guy Ritchie. Um, the Last Full Measure looks good. Probably going to be seeing that. 
Uh, we're going to see Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. As you can tell, I, uh, you can tell my level of excitement for seeing that. But we're going to see it. Uh, and then we're going to see Sonic the Hedgehog, which I am actually way more excited to see. I just think this new take on Fantasy Island might be interesting. Yeah. It's a horror remake. Um, then, like, there's kind of a lot of garbage. I think we're seeing The Call of the Wild. Uh, and then just, yeah, I mean, there's just not a whole lot coming out in Q1. Um, Onward? Yeah. I mean, we'll, we're going to see that. It's a new Pixar movie. So. I have a feeling I'm going to be more interested in all the sight gags and references to, like, fantasy tropes than I am in the actual, like, S story. story. Yeah. That. Uh, we'll probably see The Way Back. It, I mean, it's got Ben Affleck. Um, are we seeing My Spy? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll see Mulan. Mulan actually looks kind of cool. Um, I, there wasn't a whole lot of, like, kung fu movie fight scene stuff going on in the trailer. But there was a couple shots that made me think, like, that's going to be the majority of the fight scenes in that movie. So, if you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out. There's a shot where the, uh, the Huns, like, run up the Great Wall. And they, it looks straight out of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So I'm kind of excited for that movie now. But anyway, that's what we got coming up for the beginning of the year. Uh, it won't be till like, April or May that we start getting back into, like, you know, a lot of good movies. Like, a lot of must-see movies. So, uh, anything else to add to that? No. No. Check out Uncut Gems. It's Adam Sandler's uh, attempt at an Oscar, I think. All right. Uh, anyway, so until next time. Bye. Thanks for listening.